I want to introduce you now to Paul Zappa, who is a, an experienced educator uh, whose uh, company, Naroda, specialises in violence prevention programs and counselling support to schools. Now, in the past 18 months, Paul has coordinated and facilitated the training program Be the Hero uh, to over 400 facilitators in more than 60 locations across Victoria and Australia. He initiated the delivery of the Be the Hero uh, to young men in juvenile justice and is currently developing a version of the program for Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander young men. Basically, he's spent a lot of time dealing with young men and this issue. Uh, and I'd like to introduce Paul Zappa from Be the Hero. I actually want to start with a clip. Uh, the relevance of this clip is the hardest thing. I come back to the Women's Trust and I say, how'd you go out there today? And I say, yeah, great. Um, the, the, the boys were excellent. They gave us some great feedback, but I can never quite capture what I saw. And uh, I had the privilege, I've had a lot of privileges with uh, working with many men, but particularly with the Melbourne Storm Club, I can't speak more highly of, who have let me work with their under 18s and under 20s. And they are very smart, and I put them as probably our, our foremost club, as far as sporting clubs go, as, as taking the lead role in this. One day, I hope that one of their champions will have come through and he'll be the first one to speak up about this. Um, so about a fortnight ago, we took a camera with us down to one of the trainings, and we had some boys who had just, as it turns out, had actually been at training 12 months earlier. And I thought, oh, wow, this will be interesting. Do you remember anything? Um, and this clip, hopefully, is, uh, is what we got. A girl um, tries to leave a violent relationship six times before she actually does it on average. And um, that was a really scary stat to me. The thing that people miss is that, you know, being in a fight isn't a good thing. To be a hero, you don't have to sort of throw punches or, you know, do anything stupid. You know, all you have to do is really, like, keep your mates out of trouble. You lose a lot more being in a fight than doing anything else. I reckon Be The Hero is good because it really opened to my eyes to like my life, the, the way I live and the way I treat other women and stuff like that. I wouldn't like anybody to treat my daughter the way I talk about or treat other girls. I just realised the way I talk to my girlfriend and is not good and, um, and the way I treat her like not letting her wear what she wants or hanging around with her friends. I've just realised how much it affects her. You learn most things from your parents and family, so like what happens with your family you sort of take on to your life and you just got to stop that cycle. I think the Be The Hero program's really great for all who participate in it. It's just a real eye-opener, if anything. It'll just help you, um, you know, how to become a better friend and, um, you know, how to make the best out of all, your, all of your social life. Um, it teaches you about just respect and courtesy for women in the community and, um, you know, just how to get out of sticky situations and, you know, uh, bad relationships that you might find yourself in. You know, it just helps everyone about um, learning about how they can just be a better person to women and to their friends. I, I, I wish I could grab every clip we have because it, it go, it, every time I work with these young men, I'm not saying every young man, I'm not that naive, but that's the kind of response we get. Um, and I'll, I'll talk about that in a minute. I love working in the Victorian Women's Trust. Uh, myself and Will Frodo with the only two guys there. We hang tough, don't we, Will Frodo? Um, because they are ambitious, they are courageous themselves. And they always bat above their weight, hence this week and poor Jackson trying to keep up with them. Um, about five years ago, in their boldness, they realised they had to be with this bold vision at the, that end of domestic violence, or else they'd be forever working at this end, helping those women who can continue to come to them for help and get that help today. So five years ago, they boldly had a vision of a program for young men. Um, and this program would be at the front end, dealing with the people who are actually causing the violence, as you've heard tonight. And with an initial small grant of $30,000 from Vic Health, they began research and development for a program. And it's not coincidental, guess who they found as leaders in this field? A gentleman called Dr. Jackson Katz and another gentleman called Dr. Michael Flood. 
and we have used their uh, acumen, their experience, their wisdom to create the program. And the program development continued after that $30,000. You can imagine how far that went because in this room, I imagine, there are some women in here who are the anonymous donors who have funded the whole program to the tune of, I think, Mary, I'm sorry, but it's probably over $600,000. And that wouldn't be happening today if it wasn't for those uh, donors. And I, I, in and around the trust, I see it happening. And it's, it's an amazing place to work. Again, wisdom is a very important thing, and the Women's Trust had the wisdom to realise they'd developed their program at a certain point, but if it was going to be authentic and be great for young men, then young men had to be involved in, in creating it. So they went and developed a partnership with Northfield High School. They got two fantastic young male teachers and year nine volunteer boys. And the program you see is, and the name, Be The Hero, is come from them. And they framed it in a context that, we, that they saw that other boys would enjoy and understand. After that uh, development, they then realised as part of even the scenarios that um, with Jackson's bystander approach, they had to be from a boy's perspective. And that's one of the biggest parts of this program is that bystander uh, component. I'll talk about that in a minute. Be The Hero was launched in 2009 and very quickly Melbourne Storm actually saw the value of this program and partnered. And you've seen evidence of that today. And that has been a significant partnership because I tell you, as a teacher, you'd understand this. Uh, when I walk into a school with a couple of Melbourne Storm under 18 players who no one would ever know, but they've got the Melbourne Storm Guernsey on, boys come running. And I've actually employed a, a, a young gentleman from Melbourne Storm to work with me in juvenile justice because he got this and he got the message and he could convey it much better to his peers than I could sometimes. So Melbourne Storm have been a wonderful partner. So 20 months ago, I was uh, fortunate enough to be contracted to uh, deliver the program and train men who would then deliver the program. Good, decent men who could model the program uh, as well as talk about it. And I think the most important thing you can say as much as you'd like about this, you've got to model it. You've got to model it. I show different YouTube clips. There's the, my favourite is children see, children do. And I think very important that we have the modelling uh, from young, young men and from our senior men. From Portland to Sale, from Gippsland to Mildura, and in places in between, including this town hall, me and my little Vito van drove all over Victoria and we trained and we trained and we trained and over 450 people turned up to the training and the hopeful part is most of them were men and they wanted to be engaged and they wanted to take it out to their schools. In fact, the momentum actually got to a point that we again boldly thought, well, we might as well go out to a few of the capital cities of Australia. So we went out and we went to Sydney we, and we, apart from Darwin, we've been everywhere. So I've come back tonight, I suppose, as the messenger to tell you what I've seen. And my news for you is quite, quite good, and I'm not being naive. I know this is a very big job we have, but I think we should be hopeful. So I'll tell you why I think we should be hopeful. The boys love the program. The boys love the program. The men and the women I've trained have really enjoyed the program. The women have given me permission to say some things that makes the program better. The men have embraced it and they've added to it. We realised early that young men, uh, and I think a lot of us do this, but when we had a website that was text heavy, it was not as engaging as when we realised we could show the same thing through a clip. And YouTube has become my favourite friend. And you'll find enormous and wonderful resources. You can find obviously Jackson Cats and these sorts of things there. So we had to look at what was the pedagogy and the pedagogy to engage young men was a moving image, and that has helped significantly. The constant 
feedback from boys and men is when they see the statistics, they are amazed. And I, I think the most amazing thing about the silence, the breaking the silence, is how we've kept it down here around the shame and we don't talk about it thing. What is activating young men and, and men is going, oh my God, we had no idea. I'm an excellent example. Phys ed teacher, trained for four years, and uh, I've taught for 16. I never was trained in it. I never taught, you know, it existed. Not at the level it did. So us naive men are slowly waking up, which is really positive and it makes me hopeful as well. I'm hopeful because Marucci Door in Sydney asked us to come back and train the whole staff, as did Ballarat and Bendigo and other places as well. So it's working. I'm hopeful because like many of you here, you've met other people in the field who are doing wonderful work. And this is not the standalone program. The collegiality and, and the sharing of information and resources in this area is fantastic. And I, I've actually learnt more recently, Victoria seems to be very much a cutting edge for this. I'm hopeful, Jackson, because when something you put forward, I've realised that to get to these young boys and to get their passion, you go to them imagining they have daughters. And just in the theme, Michael, of, of, of saying some bad language in this audience, the common response to boys when I say, how would you feel if your daughter was a victim of violence from her partner? What would you do about it? And the most common response from these young men is, I'd fucking kill him. After we go through how violence doesn't work against violence, <laughs> but I've got the hook. They're engaged and they are passionate about it. I do need to tell you, though, there's a lot of work to be done. Uh, I went, Jackson, to a, a Vic Health training session on domestic violence, and there was over 80 people there, and I was the only guy. I was embarrassed. Um, the flip side is, and I'm interested, and I just thought of this tonight, we had over 400 men come to the training session for Be The Hero. It was for men and boys, I think some of us, Courageous men, tough guys, are a bit scared to go in a room full of women. Maybe we need to have a think about that. One of the hardest issues, and people in education will understand this, is when we've trained good, decent men, they go back out, they're really excited, and I hear back from them, oh, we, no, we haven't done it yet because um, we couldn't fit it in the curriculum and um, we don't have the resources because I also teach five other subjects. If there's anything you can do when you leave here tonight is uh, help us to help education see the value of it in their schools. As Jackson mentioned, we need to teach and model young men, model two young men, how to be good leaders. And I love Jackson's idea of this, let's combine this with leadership. Again, there's going to be a lot of work because you just don't train boys to be leaders in one session. Getting our young men, and I think getting most of us men past the social anxiety that we feel when we want to challenge the man who's just made that comment is probably one of our most difficult issues. White ribbon, not violent, not silent. So many of us have got the not violent part right. But when we, the not silent part, that's very hard. But we're getting there. I'm here to tell you that it can be done. And I think that bystander approach that Jackson talks about that we are doing is having results. You've got to do this though. Like any skill, I have a sporting background, a phys ed background. You must give them the right language because they don't have it. You've got to get them to practice what to say because they've never practiced it is a skill. And the fear is that I'm, that man might be violent back to me. Well, if we learn how to use the right wording and, and what to do, and obviously Michael and Jackson both do, have got a lot of resources in this area, we can show you how simply by giving someone a phone number is not being silent. And so these are the strategies we're teaching these young men. Okay, I want to reflect on what about these young men? What can I tell you that I've, I've learnt from them? They want to be good men. They want to be good fathers, husbands, and they want to be members and, and positive members of community. But they want to know how to do it. 
How do you develop positive and respectful relationships without, sorry, with girls and women? And I have much fun with this, say them, you know, when you yell across the yard, oi, it doesn't work, guys. All right, and that's where we're starting about de developing positive relationships with women. They want to know about emotions like jealousy, frustration, anger, and how do we learn to let these pass without precipitating violence? What's their attitude to violent men? These men, as I can see, they feed this back to me, they firmly believe that men should not in any instant be violent to women. They do not see men as t uh, violent men as tough. They'd rather frame it as violent men have a problem they need some help with. And I think I like that because we can depower any man who thinks, oh, I'm tough, that's why I'm violent. I think we need to capture what we have with these young men and maintain these beliefs at this age group as they're going into their relationships and get them to continue that into these relationships. And I will tell you, relationship discussions, they hang on every word. Michael and Jackson both mentioned pornography. If any teachers want to teach a very easy class, talk about pornography, you'll hear a pin drop. And we do talk about if you are using pornography as your guide to have a relationship with a woman, you are not going to be in a happy relationship. It's not respectful. And a big focus is, I love talking to boys, if you give out respect, what's in it for you, it will come back to you. And at that age, there's a very much what's in it for me, so let's harness that. And finally, a personal reflection. So I've been out in my van for 20 months, and I'm with Jackson, I'm with you. Let's name it. Men are causing the violence against women. Men are causing violence against men. It's time for men to take some responsibility for addressing this issue. I've also noticed that we're very good at, well, we've actually disempowered ourselves in some way with our language. When, it, when we have an issue with anything in society, it seems to me there's two words that we use to rid us of any real responsibility. They're they and they're someone. They need to do something about this and someone needs to fix the problem. And I'm not either of those. How disempowering is that? How irresponsible is that? Where, uh, where's our courage? Where are our courageous men? Where are the men being the hero to themselves? Or what about this one? You've probably heard this one a lot. The government needs to take responsibility for doing something about it. Well, I think now it's time for men to step up. I think we need to challenge our fears. And it's time, as Jackson said, for some courageous leadership. And if you are in a leadership position, you're already in a position of power, then you should be activated in this cause. There is nothing tough about a violent man. It's our responsibility to let violent men know that they are out of line. They're actually out of step with the rest of us. It is time for men to begin storming about violence. Thank you. Violence ain't cool. What's cool is to realise you've got a problem. There's no such thing as tough if you're violent. To love a woman is cherishable. And it is cherishable. I've been with the same woman for 18 years and she's showed me what it's like to love a woman. There's no toughness in hitting someone. My father hit my mother for 30 years. Do you think that is not tough? Do you know what's tough? It's to love a woman. Well, my father's always taught me to treat a woman with respect and always show that you love them and never hit them or hurt them. I've been in situations uh, myself where, you know, a bloke may have said something out of line to, to, to his partner and 
it's a difficult situation. You don't know when to cross cross the line and step in and say, look, you're going a bit harsh. Um, but, you know, I have actually stepped in in the past and said, look, you know, t take it easy. You might have had a few drinks and you want to uh, just, just pull up your mate and say, look, you know, just take, take it easy. I think we're moving to a new and better place. And I think that um, we need to learn uh, that raising our hand is not appropriate in any situation. We can do better than that. We are better than that. One of the uh, really innovative approaches happening right now. I, I love the fact that so much of the, the means of delivering that, pro of the matter of the program, is developed by the people that it is being delivered to. I mean, it, it's a really beautiful, organic way of dealing with this thing. Um, I mean, the name says it all. It's not let's beat violence. It's not creating heroes. It's be the hero, which I think really feeds into that, uh, that beautiful quote that Michael mentioned before about being the change that you want to see in this world. And feeds in, of course, to everything that Jackson said. Whilst acknowledging and indeed deeply honouring all of the work that women have done and continue to do in this area, tonight has been about men's roles and why it's important that those roles are occurring.